now that I'm not doing art, I should probably change it back again. So generally speaking, when we're talking about parametric equations, we're going to be talking about using a parameter, in this case t, to try and uh, help us describe a system that normally isn't going to be um, normally isn't going to be listed as a function. So, for instance, one of the examples that is always used is okay. Well, a circle or near approximation to a circle is not actually a function due to the fact that you get vertical line tests going everywhere that's going to hit at least twice again depending on what kind of function you have there could be all sorts of fun stuff <clears throat> so the way to get around it is you say okay well let's make this a function of time instead and then you could do all sorts of funky stuff like this and your position x comma y can be a function of time <clears throat> so you can make some tangled mess like this which is clearly not a function in like normal xy plane um, but is a function when you parameterize it on t <clears throat> so Yeah, okay. So it makes sense that you're going to um, alter its initial starting position or the zero, zero that it's going to start with. Um, and you want to either add or subtract a, like you have here, radius of four from those particular values. So it makes perfect sense. <clears throat> All right, then it says find a set of parametric equations for a rectangular equation using the following so that's actually just telling you what to do <laughs> right so you're gonna <clears throat> so if you started with an equation like this uh, x squared plus y squared equals 25 you could parameterize this on t choosing pretty much anything you want um, but most most convenient things to do with again using a unit circle or well not a unit circle uh, looking at a circle in general you know it's kind of interesting I haven't actually I haven't actually like sat down and really taught this section in an incredibly long time because <laughs> this is like the one we get to at the end of the semester that's always rushed so apologies <clears throat> so many times we'll parameterize like x equals um, r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. In one of the cases that we have here, um, they can tell you like, you know, use, well, we want t first of all, so it's time. Um, <clears throat> so x of t could be equal to, uh, radius is gonna be five and cosine of t. Meanwhile, y of t is going to be 5 sine of t. <clears throat> and then when you graph these as a coupled set of parameterized equations, then you get the uh, circle with radius 5 centered around 0, 0. And again, like, like you did earlier, adding some sort of Um, initial value on the side is going to essentially cause this to again orbit that point x0 y0 you could make it like xc yc make it center or something like that but 
doesn't particularly matter. All right, now if you're looking at projectile motion, this is the fun one. <laughs> so you got something that is being launched in Earth's atmosphere. <clears throat> um, we are going to ignore um, uh, wind resistance, at least for the most part. And naturally, if you just talk about like, you know, what's going to happen if you just take an object in Earth's gravity and you just drop it, then it will fall with an accelerating rate down toward the ground. All right, well, that also tells you the initial height is going to be a thing. So we need... Um, y of t is going to be based on y0 eventually. And then we're going to add to that. Keep in mind the units on this are going to be in feet. I know all you metric people out there. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm one of them. So since we're using feet here, we want to make sure that all of our units agree. Um, the next thing that we need to worry about is what's going to happen with some sort of initial velocity. So if an object is being tossed upward in the gravitational field, it would, under no gravity, it would continue going in that exact same direction. So it would travel with some sort of uh, V0. times, again in this case, this is going to be in feet per second, and we need it to be in feet because otherwise the units wouldn't agree, so we have to multiply it by seconds, so in other words we need to multiply this by time. So if I am being a little bit pedantic, I, I do somewhat apologize, I do want to make sure that every everybody else understands too. Um, I know that several of you are, you know, way above, all right, whatever, maybe way above this particular uh, level, being that you're in, you know, whatever other classes, but um, like I said, I just want to make sure I get everybody covered. So feet per second times seconds is going to get you a distance. <coughs> <coughs> and now we got to look at this and say, well, it's not going to work exactly like that due to the fact that, again, we're working inside of a gravitational field. So gravity is going to pull downward with a rate of one half times the acceleration times, and again here, acceleration is going to be in feet per second per second, or feet per second squared. So now we have to multiply by t squared to make sure we get second squared. Get all that. <coughs> okay. Now I will say that this is not entirely accurate, but we'll come back to that. In terms of how it's going to work in the x direction, well, we have some of the same stuff. So you've got to look at the initial x position, and you also have to look at the speed that this was traveling at. So this is going to be, again, v0 asterisk uh, times t to make sure that we get feet per second times seconds, and again, this all agrees. There is no horizontal acceleration as far as we know, so <clears throat> um, these are all of the terms that you're going to get for it. There is, however, one more thing you need to do with your V0, and that is, well, if V0 is off in this particular direction, <laughs> we're really looking at what are the components. So what is V0 just in the horizontal direction? And then for Y, what is V0 just in the vertical direction? So we gotta split this up. Say we got a right angle between these two things, 
this is going to be V with the X component and this is going to be V with the Y component. <clears throat> so the initial velocity V0 can be broken up into VX and VY and technically these are also vectors and you can do vector addition to get V0 and all that good stuff. But how do you then say what's going to happen here? Well, we need to worry about uh, if we're trying to get Vx in terms of V0, then we also need another little piece of this. Hello, phase. And that is... We need the angle. <laughs> yes, I am live. <laughs> I mean, minus like 6 seconds or 10 or whatever it ends up being, but... <clears throat> So we also need to worry about the angle theta. So here, the angles that we're talking about are going to be that the sine of theta is going to be, again, opposite over hypotenuse if you go that way. Um, Vy over V0. And also uh, Vx is going to be based on the cosine. So Vx over V0. Now, the reason that I probably shouldn't have written V0 up here with these is that really this is not V0. This one here is just Vy. This one here is just Vx. So this is the velocity in the x component direction, and this is velocity in the y component direction. So we need to get out the uh, Vy and Vx. <laughs> uh, change of variables? Sure. What particular class slash topic are you looking at? <laughs> Alright, and we'll look at um, here. Again, we want to solve for Vx and Vy um, individually. So V sub y is equal to V sub... that shouldn't do that. All right, V sub Y is equal to multiply V zero to the other side. So V sub zero times the sine of theta and V sub X is equal to similarly V zero times the cosine of theta. <coughs> so you come in here and you say, okay, under these particular conditions, we're going to have something that has an initial height by zero. Oftentimes what I will do is I will intentionally push x sub zero to b zero and just put it on the axis. Um, in your particular case you may or may not have that option. Um, yeah, it looks like you do. <coughs> Calc 3. Oh man. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, let's see. <clears throat> All right, so then we're going to take this and rework the original. So. x of t is equal to vx again is now being replaced with v sub 0 cosine of theta times t plus x sub 0 which again most of the time I try to let that be 0 easy way to get rid of it and y of t is equal to uh, v sub 0 so, oops hang on go back <coughs> alright negative one half a t squared plus v zero cosine of theta. No sine. Sorry, we're doing vertical. Times the sine of theta times t plus y sub zero. All right, so these are your new coupled equations that have all the information that you need. This is very generalized. Um, this is kind of what I do. So just to let you know. <laughs> 
you were expecting, like, here, let me solve your problem for you. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. But um, I will, at the very least, try to, at, you know, make you understand stuff at a pretty deep level, as far as I can push it. All right, and there's one more thing you should know, and that is acceleration due to gravity. <laughs> a is going to be equal to a, in this case, we already have a negative, so it's incorporated into the equation. We don't have to put it into this. Technically, it should be negative 32 feet per second squared. And that is a pretty approximate value. Um, not in that one. <coughs> Let me get my other calc book. Excuse me one second. Oops. Let's not pull that out. Yeah. Is that uh, double or triple integral? I mean, it's probably going to be the same, but you know. <laughs> both, okay. some of this. <laughs> it's been an awfully long time. <clears throat> okay. So, I'll hold on to that just for a couple minutes here. Make sure I've answered the other question, too. So, anyway. Um, so, yeah, usually you take care of the negative as part of the acceleration itself rather than as part of the equation, general equation. So half of negative 32 t squared, we end up getting a negative 16 t squared, is oftentimes the way you'll see it, at least in, you know, in Earth's gravity. <coughs> yep. And then plus your b0 sine of theta t. And uh, it should be noted, I think you've probably got this already, but uh, theta and t are not actually multiplied together, right? They're sine of theta as a term, and then t is a separate term. But, you know, want to cover all my bases. Okay. <coughs> yep, no problem. And if you have anything else, um, let me know.